Hello everyone. In the name of the Mother, the Father, and the Morning Star, greetings and welcome to you all. A very happy uh, feast of St. Cyprian to you all. I'm Reverend Uriel, and I'm here with the ever-lovely Orly Stewart. Hi. Hello. Uh, how's everyone doing tonight? Seems like the, the chat's been a little busy while we were getting everything finally set up, or final touches set up. All right. Well, did anyone have any questions about the, the prayers that we we're going to start off with? Uh, the idea is, uh, is <clears throat> that we'll start off with some prayers to honor Cyprian on his feast day. I've already made some offerings of candles and such. Um, and we'll pray a small chaplet for him. And uh, also his liturgy, or liturgy of the, the saints that were martyred alongside of him, St. Justina and St. Uh, Theo, Theotistus. Um, so afterwards, of course, as a priest with apostolic succession, uh, I can offer a benediction for everyone watching. So, all right, are we, I think, ready to begin? Yeah, absolutely. And before we get into it, I know there's a lot of people watching that are not super familiar with why we're celebrating this day. Well, why? Well, because today is the day that St. Cyprian was, was martyred. Uh, for his Christian faith, uh, you know, went over a bit of his his, his story and his you know, history in um, a previous video on Saint Cyprian. So that today we're honoring his memory and you know asking him to bless us in our spells and to continue blessing us in our spells. All right. Well, I guess on that note, we are ready to begin. Oh, and thank you, Astra Magics. They say that they love the makeup. Thank you, Astra. All right. So, there you are. Thank you. In the name of the Father, the, the Son, Son, and, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Saint Cyprian, patron of sorcerers and magicians, I, I beseech, beseech that you preserve me from all evil intents, arts, and perfidies. May they be full of confusion, those who attempt against my life. May my enemies be confused and scattered to the winds. Guard my vision and my thoughts, that I may understand the secret doctrines without error. Assist me to grow in power and wisdom, that I may serve the good of mankind. Grant me the power to intervene on behalf of those who come to me for help. Assist me in serving those who are bound by hexes, bewitching, and possessed of evil, so that the rabbit wolf shall have dominion over them no longer. Graciously obtain for us from God, those favors and graces, which we need so much in the trials, miseries, and afflictions of life. I invoke your powerful intercession, confident in the hope that you will hear our prayers and obtain for us the special graces and favors we earnestly implore. Amen. Amen. Holy Saint Cyprian, mage, mage martyr, and mystic, theurge, thaumaturge, and theophorus, saint, sorcerer, and sage, pray for us now and at the hours of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Cyprian, you who equally partakes of the Mass and the Sabbath, bless our efforts to follow you in your path. We thank you, our protector, for the special favors we have received by your powerful intercession. Cyprian, holy thaumaturge, saint and sorcerer, martyr and magus, bless us, take our prayers and spells, and make them your own. When the Lord hears them, he will not ignore them, and they will cease to be our words, but yours. Amen. Now we'll move into the liturgy proper, and just so for those uh, who are following along with the liturgy, uh, as the priest, I will say the first part, you know, the Lord have mercy with us, and then you do the response, which we, is listed after each part. All right. So we begin with the benediction. God, come to our existence. Lord, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Holy Mary. Pray for us. Holy Mother of God. Pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, born to pagan parents. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, dedicated to the God Apollo as a child. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, taught some sorcery in Olympios. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian taught illusion in Argos. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian taught witchcraft in Teropolis. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian taught necromancy in Sparta. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian taught enchantment in Memphis. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian taught astrology in Chaldea. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, master of all the occult arts. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, magus residing in Antioch. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, approached by Agalas to seduce Justina. Pray for us. Saint Just. Saint Cyprian, unleashing demons of lust upon Justina. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, unleashing demons of deception upon Justina. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, unleashing the devil himself upon Justina. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, ringing disaster in Antioch against Justina. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, casting deadly illness upon Justina. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, all magic defeated by the prayers of Justina. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, seeking truth and rebuking the devil in his snares. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, burning his books and sacrifice to God. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, confessing repentantly for his sins before all of Antioch. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, baptized in the name of the Blessed Trinity. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, made priest within a year by his zeal for holiness. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian, made bishop to lead all to divine virtue. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian condemned to death by the Romans. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian beheaded and departed into heaven. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian entering into the communion of the holy saints. Pray for us. Saint Cyprian preserving us from all evil arts and acts. Pray for us. Saint Justina virtuous maiden. Pray for us. Saint Justina chased after by the world. Pray for us. Saint Justina pursued by demons. Pray for us. Saint Justina defending herself by the sign of the Holy Cross. Pray for us. Saint Justina celebrating at the conversion of Cyprian. Pray for us. Saint Justina gracious friend to Cyprian. Pray for us. Saint Justina made abbess by Cyprian. Pray for us. Saint Justina slandered by the Romans with Cyprian. Pray for us. Saint Justina becoming a martyr in Christ with Cyprian. Pray for us. Saint Theotistus, soldier of the Romans. Pray for us. Saint Theotistus turning his heart to Christ. Pray for us. Saint Theotistus, witnessing the execution of Cyprian and Justina. Pray for us. Saint Theotistus, prank kissing the corpse of the martyrs Cyprian and Justina. Pray for us. Saint Theotistus, declaring his face in Jesus Christ because of Cyprian and Justina. Pray for us. Saint Theotistus, executed for his saking of the world. Pray for us. Saint Theotistus, ennobled for his conversion to God. Pray for us. Lamb of God, who take us away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who take us away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who take us away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Pray for us, St. Cyprian, St. Justina, and St. Theotistus, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who sent the Holy Spirit to preserve St. Cyprian from darkness, even while he dwelt within its midst, Grant in your mercy that you enlighten us and inspire us. May the life and martyrdom of St. Cyprian teach us to abandon wickedness, heal us to be free of sin, and bless us through Jesus Christ to walk in the 
Light and Truth, by the intercession of St. Cyprian, St. Justina, and St. Theotistus, lead us to a true conversion of heart, that we may use both our hands and all our power and service and sacrifice to your presence, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May you all have a blessed feast to St. Cyprian, and may he, with his saintly companions, smile upon you and intercede for you all in all your prayers. Hail, holy St. Cyprian of Antinoch, mage, martyr, and mystic, sorcerer, sage, and saint, Theurge, Thaumaturge, and Theophoros, together with St. Justina and St. Theotistus, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may St. Cyprian, St. Justina, and St. Theotistus bless you all. Well, thank you so much, y'all, for joining us for our uh, small service to St. Cyprian. Uh, now I can do a, a live Q&A if anyone has any questions or um, you know, just have a general chat and honor the, the sorcerer saint. And today is the day of his martyrdom. I guess I should make that full screen <laughs> so mm -hmm. you can see that. Let's see. You're most welcome, Jennifer and Jack. Hi, Morgan. You're Hey, the Madman from Michigan. Nice to see you over here. Indeed. Hello, Lord Ward. Nice to see you as well. And thank you all so much for spending your time with us tonight. Indeed. Oh, yeah, Jennifer actually did describe it pretty well about being a heretical priest, so to speak, uh, as a combination of Catholicism with Luciferianism. Uh, the way that became a priest was uh, through the, the Church of Light and Shadow. Uh, so it's an independent Catholic church of sacramental witchcraft. And uh, so we're centered around veneration of the, the Holy Mother and the Morning Star and both of his guises, both as Christ and Lucifer. Uh, we're not a very dogmatic church, uh, if you can't tell by my adorable Louis dress provided by Oily. Um, so, you know, it's kind of, I take a much more guess, Gnostic approach to it all, which is where the, the Luciferianism starts to, to figure in. And also, of course, very heavily inspired by the work of Madeleine Montalban. And uh, if you've read the work of Michael Howard, particularly his book of Fallen Angels, he talks about her work a lot. Uh, and that's, of course, a book about Lucifer and the other fallen angels. And uh, in her work, you know, he revealed to her that he was the, the force behind Christ, that, you know, as part of, you know, giving the wisdom, he was being the serpent in Eden and giving wisdom to mankind. And, uh, you know, to, in order to speed up their spiritual growth, he ended up having to incarnate periodically throughout time and essentially he was the the force or was all of the, the savior gods throughout history whether it was christ or adone uh, odin was said to be a form that he took and so on and so forth within that war and then yeah so my work with santissimo morte is what led me to em embrace uh folk catholicism and ultimately begin to start work with saint cyprian as well i really enjoyed working with cyprian because of my interest in necromancy well, indeed, he's patron saint of, of necromancers and witches and sorcerers. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's also considered to be the, the bishop of the graveyard in, like, uh, Latin American witch lore. What is all this silliness? Well, we we do have mods, but you know, just don't really like <laughs> talk silly. You get put in timeout. Maybe you learn a lesson, and if you don't, then you know, see about how the wrath of God feels. That's my mentality about it. It's like if you want to be here, if you want to fuck around, find out. Basically, is that my 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 attitude about it. Yeah. So Lord Ward asked about how long it took me to grow my hair this long. Um, I would say four. Years ago, it was about a chin length, so, and I haven't really had a haircut since. But you just got <laughs> well. I did we trim the back, so it's like it can be cute and spiky it's and so tease cute. it out, and it's not like so much hair to deal with. <laughs> it's to be a bit much. Well, let's see. Uh, is Charla, Charla asks, uh, "How do I feel about?" I always say her name wrong. The Aztec goddess of the underworld in relation to something more okay? 
I would say that that's one of her roots. It's not her only root, however. If you look at the the surrounding indigenous tribes, well, for first of all, the Aztecs only ruled in you know the areas now known as Mexico for what I think around two hundred years or so, and they only ruled like a, a small portion in the in the southern Mexico. And when we find the cult of Santísima Muerte, especially originally uh, before you know she becomes this big public figure in Mexico City, and you find her more in northern Mexico. Um, so that was an area that was never actually ruled by the Aztecs. You had different, different tribes or different indigenous people that were out there. And uh, one entity or one spirit that you typically will find is uh, this one lady who's half alive and then also half a skeleton. And uh, so I also feel that's a very important root in the, the cult of Santissima Muerte. And, uh, you know, you, also, you see that with, you know, we have uh, the Mother of Life with the Virgin of Guadalupe and then the you know, Mother of Death with La Santa Muerte. Um, but, you know, I don't really feel like there's any one particular indigenous goddess or spirit behind La Santa Muerte. You know, she's holy death. There's a lot of different forces behind that. Um, but, you know, you find, also find her in the Philippines with the, the same three robes as well. So that kind of rules out her being this one particular goddess in my mind. Good answer. And thank you all so much for asking such interesting questions. Uh, let's see. Fabula Ellis uh, said, asked, how would you start working with St. Cyprian? I actually have a, a whole video on my channel uh, about St. Cyprian, uh, and it also has some recommendations on how you can begin to work with him. So uh, definitely check that out. <laughs> well, thank you, so Active. Uh, they say, you're, you have this way of preaching like you've led so many masses. It's very comfortably Catholic. Well, thank you. I, I haven't led that many masses. So, you know, I haven't done a public mass. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I mean, I have uh, done a lot of prayers with the New Orleans Chapel of the Santa Morte. Uh, so I guess that's where the, the comfortable or the familiarity comes with. Plus, from that. doing it so much. We're doing this, yeah. Doing this yeah, prayer so much. Like all the time. So, <laughs> all the time. Yeah. All day, every day, you know? Got to pray your rosary. The, the dead seem to like it. So people hate on it. They just don't understand, or they haven't tried it with an open mind. Really, it's like all about the dead. It that's really is. It, that's that's where mean, it comes it's in It's really, for if it, you want to do this in a way that will make like, less crazy. Yeah, uh -huh. it's, it's very useful yeah. for working with the dead. And then also, I mean, I guess the easiest way to, to jailbreak it, so to speak, is... The, the Christian Trinity is very compatible to the Hermetic Trinity. Trinity. Like you can see direct, well, especially when you get into like the theology of Catholicism, it's very easy to see those being direct parallels because you know the early church fathers were very influenced by Neoplatonicism, Neo just like the Corpus Hermeticism you know, displays traces of that. So you see very similar ideas being bounced back and forth. And I find it very rewarding to kind of go back to those those early days of Christianity before the rise of the actual, you know, Orthodox, you know, Catholic Church and all that, and uh, and take a much more Gnostic approach to it as well. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It makes people mad for some reason, which makes it more fun. So always, <laughs> always. <laughs> it's like, why are you mad? It works. Like I don't know what's going on in your magic that something that works makes you mad. It ain't hurting anybody. Last I checked. So do what that will. Well, yeah, Jennifer mentions about being twitchy due to, to Catholic school. That's totally understandable. Roman Catholicism is like, you know, it's beautiful aesthetically and there's some amazing mystical devotions and, but like the, the organized aspect of it is, I mean, to be perfectly foul. It's just foul so in a lot of ways. <laughs> and it's very, I don't know. And you can, they have, you know, they have some good sacraments. That's an aesthetic. So that's what they got going for them. But, uh, you know, the local cunning person, you know, back in the day would be, be Christian, but they would also probably disagree with the clergy at the same time. So I just have the unique position of also being clergy. <laughs> so I get to disagree with other clergy, I suppose. So that's fun. It is fun, yeah. you know.
Uh, Lola says, Yuri, I'm Catholic too and found myself to be a witch. The way you combine this is beautiful. I've never heard anyone do this. Oh, well, I'm glad you find it very beautiful. I mean, it's very, very actually traditional, especially at least in countries that are traditionally Catholic, which go far back enough in your European descent, and odds are your, your descent has some Catholic in it. Before the, you know, until I, you start to get the split up with the Protestant Reformation. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, you know, even for like modern day witchcraft, if you just look directly south of here to Mexico and, and South America, you know, you see, see a lot of things like this. Right, like the combination of working with demonic forces and death and also Christ and angels is mm -hmm. not uncommon in exactly. other places of the world. It's they just all exist. And I mean, yeah. if, you, if you go back to like, say, medieval Catholicism, you know, it's like that as well. You know, you have, sure, you have God who's omnipresent, but you also have the saints and angels and demons that are all actors in the world. And uh, so, you know, God's not, almost seemingly not in control, actually in control of everything. It's just omnipresent. Right. And it's not like what we're doing is returning to the enslavement of, oh, no. the, of the old aeon. Exactly. This is taking that power and using it in a heretical way. And yes, exactly. In an empowering way for ourselves and then for others. So... And a lot of people have unfortunately been really, really damaged by their, inner, their upbringing with Christianity or other interactions with it. And, and I find it to be very unfortunate. You know, I feel like, you know, those people don't truly represent Christ. If you actually bother to read what Christ was talking about and meditate on it and, and pray and, you know, do all the, you know, live a Christ-like life. then yeah, I don't understand where all this hate comes from and this, you know, I can understand how you can, well, I don't know, I guess I take that back. Like, you could, if you go looking for it in the Bible, you can find it if you need a reason to justify some horrendous deed. There's, there's excuses if you know how to spin interpretation. So I understand how it's been done. I just don't understand why, I suppose. So it's like they're the actual blasphemers in my eyes, not me. I can see that. But I also think that historical Jesus was probably a magician. So, oh yeah, <laughs> especially like from being in Egypt. Hmm. Thank you all so much for coming here and joining us to celebrate Saint Cyprian's feast day. Indeed. Uh, let's see. Oceanus asks about what the traditional foods of St. Cyprian's Feast. Um, I suppose that would really, I guess, really depend on the region, my region, what kind of practice with St. Cyprian you're doing. Um, you know, the St. Cyprian you find, for example, in Brazilian Cambanda is going to be quite different from the, the St. Cyprian you find in Spain. Uh, so that's all kind of... I find for offerings, you know, uh, water, candles, incense, uh, red wine works well. And, you know, he doesn't really require anything fancy. He just likes you to do things. Like, he doesn't want you to come with a, with a petition. He wants you to, like, come with a problem and, like, do some divination with him and figure out how to fix it and then do a spell to make your situation better. You know, he doesn't want you to come and cry and be like, oh, my life is terrible. Fix it. Like, he'll help you make it better but he's not going to do all of the work for you it's, that's another reason why i really like him he's a very active spirit once once you get start to interact with him so and fabala mentions that there were an altar server growing up uh, also not a big fan of the organization, but it did teach them a lot about ceremonial magic in a way. And I can definitely see the, the correlations there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look to, like, the earliest Solomonic Grimoire, the Hygromancy, it's very, very Catholic liturgy and ritual heavy. So, I mean, Catholicism is so ritual heavy, you know, you kind of begin to associate that if you do certain things, that it's a, that it has a certain effect. Yeah, so. absolutely. Even though um, my family was a different religion, I found that learning those aspects and using it in my own personal way, like taking it away from them and using it for what I'm trying to do with my witchcraft, 
Um, I find that to be super empowering. And that was also a nice way to reconcile that mm -hmm. and to take that power and reclaim it for myself. Like I'm not doing like the same things that they were doing, exactly. but just by like taking the formula and like changing it into something else. Precisely. Uh, Morgan asks if is there a particular reason that you're you choose chose to work with and venerate Saint Cyprian? Um, this well, I mean, he's the patron saint of witches, and uh, as my relationship with excuse me, Santissimo Morte was deepening. I mean, he's one of the the saints that you would traditionally go to to make an amparo with. Um, so there is that aspect. But you know, I was just very intrigued by him. I've been reading about him for what years before, ever since you know. Um, you know, Gordon White started to, you know, circulate those that, or when, and Gordon White and Jake Stratton Kent, um, you know, were really going to circulate it or bringing these ideas into the the Western sphere at least. Because I mean, Saint Cyprian's been a pretty consistent thing in other esoteric traditions, just not in the you know English speaking Anglo sphere so much. Um, so, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's why essentially, you know, because I wanted to really really embrace the folk Catholicism and see where it would go, and he would be your patron saint as a witch. I mean, unofficially, but, you know, and the folklore officially. Oh, and hi, Leary. Well, sorry you're late, but you can always go back and uh, later and watch the beginning for the prayers and the benedictions. Uh, thank you so much for showing up. And uh, yeah, I guess we both are kind of glowing. We have the, the good glowy. We do. Mm -hmm. We have that, that necromantic glow. The necromantic glow. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you look at, speaking of necromancy, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, since we're, like, talking about Christianity, since Cyprian's a saint and all that, I mean, like, the early uh, cult of the saints, especially when we're dealing, like, things like relics, that's very, very necromantic in nature. I mean, it's necromancy and everything but name. I mean, even now, if I go to over to, there's a special chapel here for Our Lady of Prompt Succor, and they have a reliquary that you, for, you can just go and ask for them to open up to pray at, and it's just full, you know, it's open, you open up, it's just bones of saints. And uh, so it's, that's really impressive. But like back in the early church days, you know, one of the reasons why they were prosecuted is uh, they would go out to the cemeteries because uh, to be with the saints, you know, be their bodies, because now that they're in heaven, you know, it, I mean, so uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, in that time, that was a very taboo thing. And, um, uh, you know, also in Jewish lore, it was thought, you know, that necromancers went out, you know, fasted in the cemetery overnight. And that's essentially what these Christians were doing. And then, you know, in the Greek world, uh, that was considered taboo because you would bring back my isma with you and such. And uh, so, yeah, they, they were kind of kind of edgy for their for their time period. Yeah. And that's why I think it's cool, too. I really appreciate the necromantic aspect. Like when you approach yeah. it like as a, a cult, or like a cult of holy necromancy, and it begins to take on a new, whole new set of dimensions. That's what drew me in. I was like, oh, saint of necromancy? Okay, what do I do? I mean, just Christianity or Catholicism and, and, and mm -hmm. as a whole. Like you combine like the, the holy necromancy aspect with like, I guess, a, an angel idol tree, if you will. And uh, wow, wow, there's your heretical Catholicism in a nut nutshell. Uh, as far as like types of plants associated with veneration and celebration of Cyprian, uh, I mean, you know, any kind of like incense that's churchy, frankincense, uh, myrrh, uh, mm. pardon me, three kings, uh, you could even use copal. That's, um, but I mean, I like to give him offerings uh, in numbers of nine, because that's a number that's heavily associated with him. And also, and, um, but I mean, like I said, I don't really predict, I mean, and then yeah, whatever ingredients you need in your spell work, really, that's what it comes down to for me, uh, is what he likes me to, to pray and, you know, get out there in the dirt and, and do the deed. Although I do have, speaking of High John the Conqueror root, I do have High John the Conqueror root on there because, you know, it's just a useful, useful little root that, you know, you see everywhere in New Orleans and you learn a lot of lore. 
it's really interesting. I mean, I wouldn't say it's necessarily traditionally associated with him by any by any stretch of the, the imagination, other than it's a magical root. So, and he's a patron saint of magic. And what does the root do? Well, I've done the, it's, it's a lucky root. You can use it for all sorts of different things. I mean, it comes from the, you know, from hoodoo lore, uh, specifically from African-American hoodoo lore. Cool. And uh, there's a whole bunch of fun stories, but essentially it, it boils down to uh, Hi John, you know, he ends up storing, he steals the devil's wife and he ends up storing all of his power in the Hi John, the conqueror root, uh, so the devil can't find them. And so that's why the, the root is so powerful and so lucky. Wow, that's cool. I'm doing the story no justice, but I would highly recommend do, doing some research into the, the lore of Hi John the Conqueror. It's quite fascinating. And Jack, Jack, Jack Johnson says, well, I mean, Christianity is a cult of God who rose from the dead. Total necromancy. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have that aspect of it as well. And I mean, every Catholic altar has a bone of a saint in it. Like it has to have that in the altar cloth. It's sewn in there. And uh, I have the good blessing of attending a, a church that has a, a relic of St. Jude, who's one of the apostles. So how that's scientifically possible, it's, you know, miraculous. So you know, don't question it. When they bring it out, you can feel it, though. That's for sure. So I don't really question it. <laughs> I mean, it's been venerated for so much by so many people for so long. Yeah, I'm sure true. that it associates some of the power to it, but uh, let's see. Yeah, lots of good questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Or what led me to become a Catholic priest? Well, that's, that's a whole big can of worms. But in a nutshell, uh, Santissima Muerte did. Um, she, it was a whole list of weird dreams and doing divinations to make sure that was what I was like actually, or the message I was receiving. And then once I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this thing, everything just kind of like fell into place and happened as if, you know, that was indeed what she actually wanted. So, um, yeah, it was a bunch of happy coincidences, ultimately. And I don't believe Cyprian's named after the, the island of Cyprus now. And I don't believe in his story he was born there either. Oh, Scotty's question? Oh, yeah. I missed it. Um, I think we got it. We already answered it. Uh, oh, there we go. Jack asked, how long did it take me to become a priest in the ELU? So um, I'm a special case. The archbishop, when he, because I was one of the one of the original people to, wasn't the first person to join or anything, but I was part of the, the original cast of people who decided to join. Like the church was formed on Walpurgis or launched on Walpurgis night. And then that same year I joined what, like two months later, maybe three months max. Um, and, you know, I had my blog going, you know, I was doing the catechumen work and, uh, you know, impressed the archbishop and I've been involved with the occult um, for, for quite some time. And of course, you know, very involved with Santissima Muerte these last few years. And uh, yeah, he essentially decided the people that he felt he was, you know, people want not, I wouldn't say leaders, but like teachers, you know, people who have the authority to, to do certain things. And um, as you know, he took the idea from, I think, one of his Zen teachers, where, you know, if he saw you came to his, uh, you know, his thing and he saw the potential in you and you saw that you had the drive and, you know, recognize that, you know, if they did this for you and made you a teacher, that you would you know, work even harder to, you know, be deserving of it, that they would go ahead and do it for you as long as you're not like some weirdo crazy person. And uh, yeah, so long story short, impressed the, the archbishop and he and his archbishop powers decided that I should be a priest. Also because I live in New Orleans and it's pretty cool to have a, to have a parish of your heretical church in New Orleans, as it were. So I had that working in my benefit as well. But uh, ordinarily it does take quite some time and not, Everyone, you know, is necessarily uh, meant for the priesthood per se. 
Uh, everyone, of course, does get uh, the, the third degree. You get a, become a deacon, essentially. So you do receive like a, a bit of that apostolic succession. And uh, from you know doing that, it is it's nice. It's essentially it starts to turn on a, a special tap to the Holy Spirit uh, that really enhances your work. And you know, priest enhances it a bit more, turns on the tap more, and then when you become uh, you know, a, a bishop, that's when it's just the, the handle's knocked off and now you can pass it along to, to other people as well. Uh, but yeah, so to answer your question, ordinarily it would take three years to become uh, a deacon at least. And uh, depending on how, you know, you want to approach the work, you're, you're obviously allowed to take it at whatever pace you want. And then um, you can apply for the priesthood skill. Um, there's more information on the ELU website, luxumbra.org. Um, I believe if you look under the FAQ, it'll tell you more about the priesthood program. No, well, thanks, Dice Control. Say hi, Dice Control. And thanks, Kelvin, for being here. And D, Silent Active. I see a lot of people. We have Amanda here. Hmm. Uh, Ocean has asked, what is his relationship to South America, if any? Well, I mean, uh, and so in South America, obviously, it was colonized by the Iberian Peninsula. So, you know, you see the Portuguese uh, and the Spanish. And so, you know, Cyprian on the, in the Iberian Peninsula has a, a heavy association with witchcraft and sorcery. You know, that's where we get the, the grimoires uh, bearing his name and such. And so those, of course, uh, came over uh, to the New World. Uh, you know, they, uh, Portugal, for example, would exile uh, Jewish people who wouldn't convert to Christianity uh, and as well as like people who are considered to be witches and other heretics, instead of like, you know, burning them or killing them or throwing them in jail, they just send them over to the new world to, you know, as their punishment per se. And uh, so things kind of spread that way. And, uh, but yeah, so you can trace it back to the, the influence of the Iberian Peninsula. Thank you all so much for your sweet comments. Indeed. Hey, Lori. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed the blog, Morgan. So it's uh, been interesting kind of trying to take the going, going from a blog to, to doing a, a YouTube channel. It's quite, quite different <laughs> as I very quickly learned. I was like, oh, this would be easy. I love to write. And I'm like, wait, no, this is not actually like writing for a blog at all. So I tried to do that for the, the Cyprian video and uh, came out a little stilted because of that. I thought it was great. Okay. I really love that video. I'm just overly critical of myself. Yeah, like, all artists are. I didn't, I didn't do my patron right, so. And do I believe the Eucharist is the actual body and blood of Christ? Well, I believe that if, well, for it to be the actual body and blood of Christ, I, then the priest has to have the intention to celebrate mass and then they also have to have you know say the proper words and make the proper motions and then yes if they all those criteria met then it is the actual body and blood of christ and then if it's not then like one of those things are missing like then it's not the actual body and blood of christ and it's just you know i mean obviously it's always going to be a wafer and wine but it becomes more when done by a proper proper priest with the proper formula it's just like any other act of act of sorcery Right. Except a very specific special act of sorcery. The uh, Lord Word asks if either of us have a favorite grimoire. Um, when it comes to the Cyprianic text, I particularly like the uh, the Spanish version of the Sorcerer's Treasure. Uh, you find that in in Mexico a lot, and. Um, one of my teachers uh, was telling me that the book was so influential that they would actually find the spells in the tradition that people have learned orally and they've, and they've never actually even read the book. And I'm surprised to learn that there's a book floating around with all their spells that they know. <laughs> They're like, no, cool. my you know, mother taught me this. It was taught by her mother who like, or so on and so forth. So, wow. yeah. um, so for Cyprian, that would be, or Cyprianic books, that would be, one of my particular favorites. I mean, I guess it's also the Heptameron or the magical elements of Saint Cyprian uh, is also very cool for, for lots of cool reasons. Uh, you can find most of it translated in Humbanto Magai's translate, uh, book of Saint Cyprian, 
Uh, he left out the parts on like palmistry, uh, which was rather unfortunate because there were some cool, unique features to its palmistry system that I talked about, uh, dealing with like planetary stuff. Um, but who knows? Maybe, you know, if you can read Spanish, then you can have access to that. Uh, but for outside of Cyprionic books, uh, I really like, I guess, you know, the blue grimoires, uh, you know, like the Grimoire of Vernum, uh, the Grimoire of Pope Honoris, the Grand Grimoire. And then also, uh, you know, one of the sources for the Ars Goetio Solomon, uh, the discovery of witchcraft. So I'm particularly fond of that one as well. The, the best accidental grimoire there ever was. And uh, Scotty, no, I'm not required to go to the Vatican or have any input on the whole, the Holy See. Uh, I'm quite separate from the, the See of Rome. I have the same lineage, uh, you know, just as they do, but uh, they don't have any jurisdiction. According to them, I'm valid but illicit. So if I baptize you, I'm going to hell, but you're okay. According to them. Uh, this controller has asked about keeping your own special grimoire or seeker grimoire. It wouldn't be a secret if uh, you know I talked about it, I guess. Huh? So, what was it in Paul Hudson that you know he talks about the the powers of uh, or the the secrets of the powers of the witch's pyramid, and uh, you know it's essentially also the, the secrets of the sphinx. You know, the, to know, to will, to dare, and keep silent. And yeah, so on the whole, whether or not the uh, Eucharist is actually, you know, turned into the body and blood of Christ or whether it's just symbolic is the deal of great or the cause of a great deal of schisms, uh, not just, you know, East and West, but also Catholic and Protestant, amongst other things. Uh, you know, there's everybody's always schisming because that's just what you do, I guess. Like, no, you're wrong. I'm right. And uh God told me that you've been wrong for the past two centuries. Millennia. <laughs> two thousand years. Yeah. Uh, the name of the church, Jennifer, is uh, the Church of Light and Shadow. Uh, Ecclesias et uh, oh crap. It looks at umbra. Lucrecia Lu yeah, Ecclesia Lucius et Umbra. There we go. Like I can speak in Latin. It's not that difficult. It's actually easier than English. <laughs> Once you learn, like it doesn't really change and get all wonky. I mean, Jackie, I don't really think you could start an ELU schism. I mean, it's non-dogmatic. So I guess you'd have to be a dogmatic butthole to start a schism. Don't do that. No one wants that. That's no fun. It doesn't really sound fun. It doesn't sound fun. Yes, that's me shaking my priestly finger at you, Jeff. Don't be a butthole. <laughs> Not that I think you will. I'm obviously just teasing. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> as, I, as I shake my finger. That's hilarious. Um, you know, I can send in nuns with rulers if that's more to your liking. I feel but, like uh, a lot of people here would like that. Yeah, I was going to say that would definitely probably be to my liking. God, have mercy. But... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, All right. Well, How delightful. Thank you. Well, this has been a very delightful evening, y'all. Uh, we're coming up close to about an hour. Uh, does anyone else have any any other questions about Cyprian or like Catholic folk magic or or any kind of particular related things? The Church of Light and Shadow. I mean, as priest, you know, I have a. I run the, the, pardon me, the Our Lady of Shadows Coven here in New Orleans. So, and we've uh, been surprisingly growing the last couple of weeks. I was very surprised to see that and, and delighted. But I was like, aha. 
people like Lucifer and and Jesus. And Jesus. They go really well together. Yeah. Don't be scared. Oh, nice controller misses your long, colorful socks. We'll have colorful socks next time. I promise. You can definitely have. Uh, Bella asks, is it purely Catholic based? Uh, the Church of Light and Shadow, I assume you mean? Um, so it's Catholic, yes. It's Christian, yes. But it's, uh, you know, it's not like the dogmatic Roman Catholicism, Catholic, Catholicism that you're thinking of. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we venerate Lucifer. So, I mean, you're like, I, I work with demons and stuff. So, uh, you know, like my demons and my angels, my, my flappy boys and my spicy boys. So, or horny boys, whatever you want to call them, they... Anyway, <laughs> um, so I mean, obviously, we're we're a bit heretical, I guess, in the Orthodox. I would say side, very so. extremely <laughs> It's extremely. I mean, they heretical. made me a priest, so they like we have femboy priests. Like, come on, y'all, we're clearly pretty open-minded. I would hope. Hope people get that gist. Anyway, you can, you can explore these mysteries, uh, not just on your own, but have other people to, to talk about it with. Um, you know, there's certain things about the church that I can't talk about unless you're actually in the church. Because, um, you know, secret church is secret. I'm allowed to tell people that I'm a member of the church, but I can't tell a single other soul that, say, uh, I don't know if there was another person here or Orly, you know. If they were, couldn't say. So... You won in the chat, hey, no, well, I guess somebody's already added themselves, but anyways. <laughs> anyways. Oh, cool. Uh, let's see. There are several... Uh, Ocean has asked about in the Grimoire of Varum, there are several demon kings, and in many Cyprionic works there are as well. Uh, what four demon kings do I use in my day-to-day? -day? Uh, I typically stick to the ones that you find in the Clavis Inferni, uh, you know, Orion's, Paimon, Egan, and uh, Edimon, uh, or Maimon, sorry. Um, but also, you know, I work with the uh, Hagromantia sometimes. Uh, and so for that, you have Lucifer, Asroth, Beelzebub, uh, and Asmode. Uh, so I kind of switch it up depending on what I'm doing. Uh, there's also the messengers of the four kings, and uh, they, there's, the hierarchies get really complicated. Um, but the, the Grimoires I uh, work with, they all share that, that trinity of Lucifer, Bezalbuth, and Asheroth being the, the ruling trinity over the other spirits. You know, I, I mean, I guess kind of like the, the trinity of Lucifer, Bezalbuth, Satan technically kind of comes later because of Hygromantia, you have the, the LBA, as it were, instead of LBS. Um, although I do like that they have Satan and Lucifer as separate spirits. I like that. Um, well. But you also will, you know, there's a, a spirit called like, what is it? Sata, it's not Satanas, but it's like Satanchia in the Grimorian Verum. It might be, it might be. I mean, it's a derivative of Satan for sure. It's name at least. So is it Satan? I guess you can find out, you know? Um, Moyapu says that their family was heavily Catholic, but do seances and tarot and Ouija boards and uh, that they're, Grandma and aunt would take spirits to where they belong at night. And yeah, Catholicism and, and spirit, spiritism and like the world, it's a very, I mean, Catholicism is a really haunted world when you really think about it. So <laughs> that's, that's why I, I love operating within that it's paradigm. It's scary and really dark and super morbid. It, it can be, yeah. It can be very morbid. But then yeah. at the same time, it's In very a beautiful, beautiful and uplifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I like uh, it. You know, yeah. it's always reminding you that, you know, well, Memento Mori, as my just says. You are mortal, and do you get extra chances? I mean, no one really knows, but I would hope so. That's what purgatory is for, right? You know? All right, y'all. And yes, Lord, what Catholic rituals are, are magic indeed. I mean, the, the Eucharist itself is an act of sorcery. It's, you have to have that intent and do the, the special formula in order for it to turn into the body and blood of Christ. And have the authority to do so, just like you know, you find in the grimoires, where you have to have the authority to call up the spirit. So they, you know, that's the the point of making special tools and doing the purifications and the and the prayers at certain times of the day and all that. This is show show that you do have that authority. You can initiate it into the 
into the secrets and now you have the authority to work with the spirits for them to listen to you. And you can really tell the difference, like with that thing we were doing. Oh yeah, when we were doing yeah. the Asochias prayer four times a day from the Grimoire and Verum, like it yeah. was along with the prayers for the dead and and then you know that got crazy. That crazy intense really fast and like but in a really good way. Yeah. Time. So And it really helped me with my overall relationship with the dead in general. Yeah, you were saying how it like really helped cool things down and you were having less bad dreams related to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like no no bad dreams. Right? Offering a little little prayer and a candle and light and goes a long way. Goes a long way. And yeah, well, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time I've set my hair on fire doing these kinds of things. And it is yet still this long. So I put, you know, I'm also, I'm being, I've got good psychic senses. I'm just trusting God. I'll protect them if they catch on fire. And if they do, I'm really good at getting it to go out really fast. As I said, it's not the first time that it's happened. It's long, and sometimes you've got big fires and cauldrons, and you know it doesn't take much for a little extra to come out where you're not expecting it. Plus, so your hair is short in the back. It's short in the back, so yeah, it's not as long. It's only long in the mm -hmm. front, so all the long parts are quite safe. Thank you for your concerns, though. But yes. Well, y'all, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and. Uh, Sibling's altar feels really good. Um, um, yeah, I always suck at closings because I don't like to say goodbye. And uh, please subscribe. Indeed, yes. Hit that subscribe button right now. Hit like, share this video, and hit that little bell notification to be notified of when Rav Yuri M will put up their next video. Indeed, I have uh, several lined up. Uh, for the upcoming week. So I've got one on uh, Cyprianic witchcraft on how you can the, uh, the, the Pentacles of Solomon because, uh, you know, they have a connection to Cyprian as it turns out. Uh, so I'll be discussing, you know, the history of all that and how you can incorporate that into your work. Uh, I also have uh, Moreto Jamo coming back uh, to discuss Lucifer in uh, Brujeria. And uh, also we're going to discuss more about La Anima Sola, the, the lonely suffering soul in purgatory. And uh, maybe you can gleam some info on how to uh, begin to approach these spirits as well. Uh, it's been quite an honor to be learning, learning from him. So very excited to. He's to really have cool. On. Yeah, no, he is really cool. And uh, he's also, well, I'll, let, I'll let him say that. So <laughs> but it's surprises exciting. for later. Surprises. Um, and then you also, also have interviews. Uh, at some point, Jack Grell, author of the Hecation, is supposed to come on uh, to discuss uh, Marian witchcraft and Heptameron. And I have a Santissima Morte practitioner uh, from the Philippines that I'm going to be doing an interview with, uh, amongst other things. So, And uh, if there's anything in particular that you all would like to see videos on, just let me know in the comments, and I would be happy to uh, begin to explore those directions with you. So... Well, thank you again so much, y'all. Uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and sign off now. But until next time, and may the blessings of the Mother, the Father, and the Morning Star be upon you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>